Hello everyone and welcome back to Beatly Toast Beatles channel. Lovely to have you here. Thanks for joining me for this video. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, if you just stumbled across this channel by accident, you're seeing it for the first time. It's not so much a welcome back, but just a welcome. So welcome to my channel. I, I hope you enjoy uh, the content here. Okay, now in today's video, I'm going to be doing uh, another uh, episode in my deep dive series. I think this is episode 13, where uh, we take a deep dive into one of the albums. And for this episode, we're looking at George Harrison's 1974 album, Dark Horse, a much maligned album. And so we're asking the question, is it really as bad as it's made out uh, to be? And... Um, the way we do that, if you if you follow the channel, you'll know the way that we do that. But if you if you if you you know are seeing this channel for the first time or haven't seen any of these deep dive review videos, then I will explain how we do it. So basically, we're going to look at the album, the CD, what you get with it, um, and then we're going to look at every track on the album individually, uh, analyze it, talk about it, and give it a score out of 10, unless it's a cover version where we give it a score out of seven. The reason for that is because, you know, I believe that the writing of the song is part of the making of an album process. And, uh, you know, therefore, you know, a self-penned song is worth more than a, a cover version. Now, what we're going to do is when we've given every song a score, uh, we'll add up the score for each track on the album to get a total for the album, divide it by the number of tracks on the album to get an average score for the album. And when we've done that, we're going to plonk it uh, according to its score in a kind of league table that I've created, which I call uh, Beatly Tones Great Big Album Review Ranking Table, which at the moment uh, looks like this. And, um, you know, what it does is it takes the albums of John, Paul, George and Ringo and matches them up against the albums of the Beatles. So we kind of get a great big sort of pecking order because I think that everybody wants to know whether Gone Troppo is a better album than Bad Boy. Or maybe they don't. Maybe they don't. But uh, that is that is what we're going to do. Before we get going, um, I always like to put the album into the context of the time when it was made. So 1974, what was going on in George's life? Now, up, up until this point, George had, uh, had only success as far as his musical career uh, goes all things was passed was massive was a massive album for it he'd done the concert for Bangladesh and got all the plaudits for organizing uh, this great big charity concert be that became the prototype of all sort of benefit gigs that followed like Live Aid and stuff stuff like that he'd raised a lot of money uh, for charity uh, the follow-up album to all Things Must Pass, uh, Living in the Material World had been a number one album. It did have its critics uh, because of its spirituality uh, and its sort of preachingness. But generally, you know, it was a well-received album. Now, in 1974, George, dis despite the sort of the failings of Apple, had decided that um, he wanted to form his own record label, Dark Horse Records. He'd signed two artists uh, up, up to this point to the label, uh, an acoustic vocal uh, trio called Splinter, and he was producing their album, The Place I Love, and also Ravi Shankar, and he was producing uh, an album for him called uh, Shankar Family and Friends. He also still had the whole Beatles thing was still going on. The unraveling of, you know, the Beatles, uh, you know, partnership that was still going on. Uh, George, along with John and Ringo, were also suing Alan Klein because, you know, the penny had dropped and uh, they had decided that Paul had been right all along. So that was going on. He was also writing and recording his new album, Dark Horse, and planned to take it on tour in November and December of 1974. He was going to tour uh, the US and Canada, making him the first ex-Beatle to take on a fully blown uh, tour of the States and Canada, a sort of a brave move. Now, while he was recording this and rehearsing for the tour, uh, he con contracted laryngitis, which meant that some of the tracks on the album, uh, his voice is not at his best. It's very sort of, you know, 
quite horse leading to the album being nicknamed Dark Horse spelled H O A R S E. Ha 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 ha. Uh, great joke. Anyway, um, so 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 that happened. Uh, in his personal life, his marriage to Patty was virtually. Oh, yeah, it was pretty much over. Um, he was having affairs uh, with with other women. Uh, Maureen Starkey, Ringo's ex-wife, uh, Chrissy Wood, Ron Wood's ex-wife, uh, an ex-girlfriend or fiance of Rod Stewart. Not that he was only interested in women whose uh, you know husbands were rock stars, because he'd also met uh, Olivia as well, who you know would go on to be his wife uh, for the rest of his life. That relationship had started as well. He'd also kind of fell out of love with his religion his spirituality um he you know he uh, he had hit, he was hitting the bottle um he was also doing a lot of cocaine as well uh so he'd kind of fallen off of that spirituality um wagon if you like uh, so you know so you know a lot of things going on in uh you know in george's life at that time uh you know he described his life life as in 1974 as being a bit of a soap opera and that's a very good description okay well let's get on with the review of the album okay so uh this is the dark horse lp uh my original copy this is the only copy that i have of this album on vinyl um i bought this really really early on and i can distinctly remember buying it at the same time as I bought the Imagine um, album. I've no idea why I went for this album uh, rather than any other Georgia albums. The only th other, th the only thing that I can think of it must have been at a bargain price. But I did buy it um, very early on in my buying of the solo album. So I've lived with this album quite a long time. Uh, and that may be uh, a reason why I have a soft spot for it um the cover is uh, a little bit sergeant pepper-esque a little bit ringo uh esque uh, this is um george's school photo from the uh, liverpool institute the back cover of him sitting on a bench in friar park um it is a gate fold of him walking through the gardens of uh, friar park with the track listing on the top um the fella that he's with there is actually uh peter sellers Inspector Cluso. Um, the Inner Sleeve um, gives you all the details of each of the songs, uh, who plays on what songs, and I will go through that as we talk about um, each of the songs. Uh, there is a printed lyric sheet as well, and on the back of that is that same photo um, from Friar Park. Um, the, the vinyl um, is a custom, uh, custom label with George's eyes uh, on side one and Olivia's eyes uh, on side two. That is the vinyl. Uh, the CD, uh, the CD, uh, I've got a very nice sort of digipack uh, version of the CD. I think there was one before this that came in a jewel case. I can't quite remember. Uh, anyway, that is the CD. And the CD is presented in a slightly different way. Uh, to the LP, um, you do get the inner sleeve. My one is, I don't know if they're all like this, but the uh, the writing on this is much fainter uh, than it is on the LP. Um, that is what the disc looks like. Um, and there is, um, you know, there is a, a gatefold is the same. Uh, and there is a booklet with it. Uh, as I say, it's presented slightly in a different way. Um, it's got a um, sort of a four page essay by Kevin Howler, who you know has done a lot of writing about the Beatles. Uh, you get that photo, which obviously isn't in the LP. And um, uh, the, the 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 songs are presented in a slightly different way uh, here, with you know some drawings and some some colour bits and a, a mock up here, which may be a mock up of the Dark Horse label in general, or just maybe the Ding Dong Ding Dong single. Uh, interesting to note that on this mock-up, um, he he gives uh, Sir Frankie Crisp a, uh, a a songwriting credit. Uh, I'll come to that in a bit, but obviously he didn't on the uh, at the actual record. Um, you get some more, some more lyrics there 
uh, handwritten lyrics, but you do get the uh, normal printed lyrics as well. So all in all, it's uh, you know it's a very nice little little uh, CD package. This later version of the CD does come with uh, two bonus tracks. Uh, one, the song um, "I Don't Care Anymore," which is the uh, the B side of the Ding Dong Ding Dong single, and it also comes with uh, an early demo of the title track "Dark Horse," where of course uh, George's voice. Uh, it's absolutely perfect. It's before he got laryngitis, so uh, we do get to hear the song uh, without the the horse voice, and um, very nice it is too. Uh, but we won't be talking about uh, that because it's not on the main album. Uh, but let's start talking about the music that is on the the main album. Okay, so track one, side one, Harry's on tour. Express is an instrumental. And um, I'm not a big fan of instrumentals, but this is quite a good one. Um, it kind of, it ebbs and flows, it, it moves nicely. Uh, it's got good pace about it. it, it speeds up, it slows down. It really shows off uh, George's slide, slide guitar uh, skill. Now, LA Express uh, were Joni Mitchell's backing band for her Court and Spark tour, uh, which George went to see in 1974 in London. He liked the band so much, he invited them to the session. It included Tom Scott, who's obviously played on All Things Was Past. Uh, Roger Kellaway, uh, no relation to Glenn Kellaway from The Basement, is on piano. Uh, John Gurin on drums, Max Bennett on bass, um, Robin Ford on guitar. Robin Ford uh, actually played in George's band that George took on tour uh, in November and December of 1974 and of course George and uh, the lineup for this band is also the same for the next track uh, Simply Shady it's you know it's a, an okay track I'm not I'm not mad on instrumentals I'm especially not mad on instrumentals opening up albums but this is quite a good one and I'm going to give it uh, a six which I think is fairly generous now the next song uh, Simply Shady, as I say, features the same lineup of musicians, and uh, I absolutely love this song. Now, George's voice is suffering a little bit during this song, and he, you know he's fairly low in the mix. Um, this time, he can't blame Phil Spector because George produces uh, this album himself. Um, but I think maybe because of the frailty in his voice, he's buried himself a little bit in the mix, which is a little bit disappointing. So I'd love to hear this, uh, you know, re remix, because I don't think his voice is that bad on this song. I quite like it. Um, but this is a song, uh, you know, that sort of, you know, is talking about, George, you know, we talked earlier about George um, sort of abandoning his spirituality uh, and his religion and kind of slipping back in to drinking uh, quite heavily and uh, doing a fair bit, a bit of, okay and it's kind of reflected in the lyrics um you know no sooner had i sown it when i began to reap i was torn from shallow water and plunged into the deep and as i started drowning i, I hung onto a straw that somehow kept me floating as my madness craved for more and he goes on and the rest is simply shady it's all been done before it doesn't make life simple that's for sure uh, you may think of sexy sadie let her in through your front door uh, but your life won't be uh, so easy anymore and ain't that the truth and you know this song was written um in, george wrote this song in bombay and maybe you know maybe um you know you know, when he was in Bombay, he was maybe thinking about, uh, you know, the time when the Beatles spent together in Rishikesh. Uh, maybe that reminded him of Sexy Say. That's why he included it in the, the lyric. I don't know. Um, but I do absolutely love this track. Uh, you know, the musicians on this are absolutely superb. Uh, you know, the piano jingles and jangles. Uh, the bass, uh, you know, floats in and out. Uh, just absolutely love love this song and I'm going to give I think it's my favourite on the album I'm going to give it 9 uh, I'm going to give it 9 out of 10 so track 3 is a song called So Sad and uh, absolutely fantastic song it is now the lineup for this song is uh, Ringo and Jim Keltner on drums Willie Weeks on bass Nicky Hopkins on piano which kind of indicates that this may have started its life during the uh, Living in the Material world uh sessions and was kind of put to one side um for, for a while 
uh, musician as you would ship as you would expect is absolutely fantastic now this is a song uh a, it's a it's a commentary on on the state of george and patty's uh relationship their their marriage it is falling apart but he interestingly writes this song in the third person uh which is um i don't know whether he's trying to disguise it by doing by doing that but it's certainly an unusual way and he also takes an, an opposite stance uh, as far as the uh you know the imagery uh in this song um compared with here comes the sun here is he's setting it in a you know a wintry a cold wintry bitter um you know setting now the winter has come to eclipse out the sun that has lighted my love for some time and a cold wind now blows and not much tenderness flows from a heart of someone feeling so tired very dramatic and heartfelt lyrics um from george he does really well with the lyrics on this song and absolutely captures that moment um i do really love this song as i say musicianship is superb again this is one that may have worked better if it had been left until george's voice had recovered but it is a superb song and i want to give it a nine out of ten now the next song uh by my love um a cover of the everly brothers song and uh you know as i said at the top of the video i want to give uh cover versions of songs uh a score out of seven rather than out of ten but this is so far removed from the uh the original Ed everly brothers song that i'm kind of tempted to give it a score out of ten but i am going to give it i'm going to be consistent because you know that's what i've done with all the other the other reviews but george does add quite a lot to this song lyrically and he is bitter he is he, you know he is angry there goes our lady uh with with you know who i hope they're happy old clapper too uh we had good rhythm and a little slide um then she stepped in did me a favor i threw them both out which isn't quite uh the the the, the story but you know you know, we see where where he's coming from um he he goes on further he he changes the the second verse of the Ever, everly brothers song he changes some of the words to reflect the opposite of what they do in the everly brothers song and add some of his own now i'm into romance i shy away from love so he's now you know he's talking about he's not interested in long-term relationships he's just interested in sexual gratification uh got tired of ladies that plot and shove me and that's the reason we can all see so clearly uh they see that our lady is out on a spree uh really bitter bitter lyrics and this song uh, has got a funky feel to it um george harrison plays everything on this song uh despite um giving a, a cheeky a cheeky credit on the inner sleeve uh to patty and uh eric clapton i've done some research on this and they go nowhere near uh they're going nowhere near this song um but also um you know people question whether george does play everything on this this song because it's got a really drum uh really tricky drum pattern which would be beyond george's capability as a, a drummer but um it's credited on the inner sleeve as being rhythm ace which is a kind of an early prototype drum machine so that's why uh that that song has got this awkward um you know drum pattern drum pattern um okay uh, you know this is a song that doesn't get much love from fans but i like it because it's so different i like george being bitter and twisted um on on this song and um, you know this the, these pair of songs kind of go go together because the subject matter is the same and it's interesting that george is reflecting on human sorrow now rather than sort of spiritual uh resolve uh so bye bye love uh i'm gonna give uh i'm gonna give bye bye love six and a half out of seven so the final song on side one is Maya love and of all the songs on uh the dark horse album Maya love was the one that it took the longest uh to drop with me i always thought it was a little bit near um but i really like it now and uh, it was kind of written as a as a vehicle uh for uh george's slide guitar and then no there's no less than three uh slide guitar breaks in this song um but the word maya in 
Sanskrit means illusion or fake. And George has used the word Maya before uh, in the song, beware of darkness on all things must pass, beware of Maya, beware of illusion. And he uses it here in terms of love. And so it completes a kind of a trilogy of sort of bitter songs about love. And, you know, George is not about love anymore. Uh, so this sort of, those sort of trilogy of songs are kind of, you know, George, George's uh, Walls and Bridges moment then, if you like. And, um, you know, uh, you know, my love, love is like the sea flowing in and out of me. My love is like the day. First it comes, then it rolls away. Uh, and then best of all, my love is like the rain beating on your window brain. Uh, you know, great stuff, great stuff. Um, and I do really like it. The musicianship on this song is superb. And it's a kind of, it's a kind of blues, it's kind of bluesy, it's kind of funky, it's kind of solely. Uh, Billy Preston on electric uh, piano. Um, what else have we got? Uh, we've got Willie Weeks on uh, bass, Andy Newmark on drums, Andy Newmark who would go on to play drums on Double Fantasy, uh, Tom Scott on horns and George on guitars. And um, all the all the lineup of this song would be would form part of George's touring band uh, for that US and Canadian tour. So my love um, is a song that I do like now, and I want to give uh, my love a seven out of ten. Uh, side two opens with ding dong ding dong, and it's a it is a bit of a throwaway. For a long time, I thought oh, this is terrible, this is rubbish, uh, but actually it's quite harmless. Uh, the, the whole sort of, you know, ring out the, the, you know, ring out the old, ring in the new, uh, ring, you know, ring out the false, ring in the true, uh, was taken from uh, stuff that was inscribed in the stone uh, at Friar Park George's home. And he said, you know, he'd been living there for five years before he realised that that was a song. Um, and, he, you know, he made it as a song. It came out as a single in December 1974 as a kind of a... Um, uh, not so much a Christmas song, but more a New Year song ringing in the New Year. It did absolutely nothing. Uh, it didn't chart. Uh, the lyrics, yeah, very overly, simp overly simplistic uh, and a little bit trite. But this song is is harmless. Um, I want to give it. Uh, I'm going to give it six and a half out of ten. Now. The the next track is the title track, Dark Horse, and you know George's voice is absolutely shredded uh to pieces on this song and um it's a, which is a real shame because i think this song um you know had it been allowed to uh be recorded later when george was over his laryngitis then you know this could have been a george harrison uh classic song um it is a really it is a really good song and again this is an, you know another song where George is sort of saying well you you know you thought I was this but actually now I'm I'm this and you know I'm not about love anymore <laughs> I'm about you know having a good time uh, you thought you knew you thought that you knew where I was and when it looks like I've been fooling you again um, you thought that you had got me all staked out but baby looks like I've been breaking out I'm a dark horse running on a dark horse uh, I'm a blue moon since I stepped out of the womb I've been a cool jerk just looking for the source I'm a dark horse uh, love the lyrics on this song uh, an acoustic guitar sort of driven song um, we've got Jim Keltner uh, on hi-hat and we've got uh, Andy Newmark playing the drums Willie Weeks on bass and uh, Billy Preston on electric piano on this song. Um, as I say, it would, you know, it, you know, if it had been left a little while to, so he could record it with, you know, a clean voice, it probably would have been a lot better. But he wasn't afforded that luxury, both by the, you know, the record label that needed the the the, the album out and the fact that. You know, George needed this needed this album out because he was touring it. He was including songs from the album on the tour, and you know, this was one of the problems with the song with the with the tour that he was playing songs that nobody knew because the album wasn't out. You know, the first part of the tour, the album wasn't out yet. Um, but I like Dark Horse as a title track. Uh, I'm giving it eight and a half out of ten. So the penultimate track on the album is the utterly glorious uh, Far East Man. 
uh, co-written with Ron Wood. Uh, the song started off being a song that, that George and Ronnie Wood were working on for Ron's album, um, I've Got My Own Album to Do, also recorded in 1974. Um, I think most of the lyrics written by George, the music written by George and Ronnie Wood. And um, um, th although most of the same musicians played on Ron's version, uh, they did re-record -re it for George's album at Fry Fry Park and uh, sort of the, the you know, it's Billy, Billy Preston on piano, um, Willie Weeks, Andy, Andy Newmark um, and Tom Scott on horns. Uh, an utterly fantastic song, uh, very soul, a very soul feel to it. Um, you know, it's kind of a song about friendship. Um, it's mostly been interpreted a bit about being about um, Ravi Shankar. Um, the, the idea for the, the title came from a T-shirt that Ronnie Wood had. The Faces had just done a tour of the Far East and uh, Ron had a T-shirt uh, that said Far East Man on it as a play on words <laughs> of a far out man. And, um, you know, they both like this and they, they created this this wonderful, wonderful song. Um, really, really, really strong song. One of my favourites on the album and I want to give it nine out of ten. Uh, really love Far East Man. Uh, there's all sorts of shenanigans going on between Ronnie Wood and Patty and Chrissy, <laughs> Chrissy Wood and George. Uh, I think they both had a go on each other's wives. And uh, so the story story goes all a bit all a bit strange. Um, but you know, this is a song about friendship, uh, friendship that went maybe a little bit too uh, friendly in some some directions. Some might say, but um, you know, really really fantastic song. So yeah, Far East Man, I'm giving nine out of ten. The final song on the album, uh, Jay Krishna, it is he is the only nod to uh, the former sp spirituality uh, that, that's been, you know, present on all things was past and uh, uh, living in the material world. Again, it's a kind of a, you know, a chanty song. Um, it's very repetitive. Um, it even features a wobble board. <laughs> um, the wobble board, who plays the wobble board? The wobble board is played by someone called Emil Richards. And, um, you know, this, again, this song doesn't pull up any trees for me, but on the other hand, like Ding Dong Ding Dong, it's kind of, it's pretty harmless, uh, quite a nice way to end the album. And I am giving uh, it is a six out of 10. Um, I think it is sort of, it's probably one of the weakest songs on the, on the album, but there you go. So Dark Horse as an album scored a uh, 67 Point five points. There are nine songs on the album, giving it an average score of 7.5. So let's plonk that into uh, Beatley Toe's great big album review ranking table. And we see that it comes in in seventh place, um, just above Wings at the Speed of Sound, just below uh, the Beatles' Help album. Uh, now, I know that a lot of people will disagree with my uh, opinions on this album. It's not a very popular album with fans, um, but as I say, it's one I've got a bit soft spot for, maybe because it was one of the first solo albums that I bought. But, you know, I'd love to hear your views on the, uh, the Dark Horse album. Um, I don't expect you to agree with me. You probably think that I've been over generous. Um, but you know, I think this album is an album of mostly strong songs that are maybe a little bit, you know, maligned because of the state of George's voice uh, when he recorded them, uh, which is a bit of a pity. I think, you know, the, the, the start and the end of the album um, are probably its weakest points, uh, which arguably should be you know, it's strong, an album's strongest points. But the bit in the middle, I think is great. I don't think there is a bad track on this album. Uh, that is just my opinion. Love to hear your opinion. Please tell me about that down in the comments. You know, I read all your comments. I will respond to all your comments if they uh, need a response to them. Okay, uh, that is it from me. Uh, 
Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this video and I will see you all very soon. Bye bye. Shri Krishna, Shri Krishna, Krishna, Shri Krishna, Shri Siri Krishna, Shri Radhe, Shri Radhe, Radhe, Shri Radhe, Shri Siri Radhe.